Okay, guys, just to check, can you hear me properly? Uh, do a sound check. If you can hear me, then we'll get into uh, the first lecture about the internet. Uh. Okay, so guys, can, uh, just do a sound check first. Is the audio clear to you? Everybody, okay, fine. Can we can we start? Okay, cool. Now, guys, welcome back. And today we are going to talk about the first lecture on the internet. So this is a very simple lecture, easy lecture as an intro. So it is nothing technical yet. And um, if you are having those questions like, um, do I need to? Because you see, uh, the slides are not full of words. So you actually have to attend the class and you have to follow so that you know what's going on. Uh. Now, uh, if you're worried about what to study, uh, don't worry about that because um, for the exam material, I'm going to tell you what is the focus area. So for this class, I just, I hope that you can uh, make and take it as a fun fun thing instead of you want to know what to study for the exam. Okay. So for this lecture one, it is nothing technical, so it wouldn't be coming up in the exam. It is just an introduction. Okay. So let's get started. Now um over here, uh we'll start with a picture of my girlfriend first. Now here Taylor Swift. You're looking at my girlfriend and she is currently in New York and I'm currently streaming from Gampa so actually you can guess uh, we are actually having a long distance relationship okay but you know what they say they say the key to a healthy relationship is uh, about communication okay which is why this subject is so important because we're going to learn about communication and um, so for me and my girlfriend uh, we talk time to time uh, on Facebook Messenger which is why, uh, although we are not physically together, we still feel close to each other. Okay, so that sums up an example on of what an internet can do for me. So the internet, uh, allow us to reach anyone, anywhere, easily from, uh, anytime you want to talk to somebody, you can just give them a call, send them a message, anything like that. Okay, so um, the internet, uh, uh if you really want to define internet in a scientific way. The internet is actually a collection of devices and devices that are all connected together using networking devices. Okay, so I'll repeat this again. Uh, the internet is just a collection of N devices. So N devices are like the devices that you're using to get online. So it can be your mobile phone, it can be your laptop, it can be uh, your smart TV, any device that can go online are N devices. And all of these devices, uh, they have to be connected together using networking devices. So some of the examples of networking devices are switches, hubs, and routers, which is what I'm going to show you later in this lecture. We'll be unboxing our switch, router, and a hub together. I'll show you how they are different from each other and how we can connect the uh, cables to all these networking devices. Okay, so coming back to this uh, internet, so uh, internet basically is just a collection of networks. Okay, so when we say networks, it means uh all the machines that is connected together. Okay, now for example, if you are streaming from your home right now, then you are from your home network. Now if you have another friend that is also streaming at the same time, then he is from his own home network. For me, I'm currently streaming from Utah. I'm in the university right now, so I'm streaming from the campus network. So you see, on the internet, you have so many different type of networks and we need to find a way to connect all these networks together and when all these networks are connected together, then you get the internet, okay? Now, to the next slides here, um, on the next slide, you'll be seeing... I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, sorry, uh, my girlfriend is talking to me again. So, uh, on the next slides, you'll be seeing all these uh, bricks here. So, hold on, I just let me do this. Okay, so you can actually just think of these bricks as nodes. Okay, so when we say nodes, uh, um, the scientific way for us to define all the end devices on the network, we call them a nodes. Uh. Okay, so your PC is a node on the network. Your 
smart TV is a node on the network. Okay, so these are called nodes. And then uh, how the question here is how can we build networks? So the simple answer to this question is actually we just need to find the best way to connect all of these nodes together. Okay, so when we say best way, what does it mean by best way? It means uh, all the different kind of networking technology that we have. So for example, one of the most commonly used way for us to connect networks will be using a LAN cable or we call them an Ethernet cable. So if we have uh, like two devices here together, then when I connect these two devices together using a LAN cable, then they've become a network. This forms a small network with two holes inside that network. Okay, now um, after this, let's say uh, another way, maybe I'm going to use a wireless connection. So for this node, I want to use Wi-Fi instead of using a cable. Then this node, I also use a Wi-Fi. This node, I also use a Wi-Fi connection. Now, when we do so, then when we connect all of them, three of them together to a network, then they form another network. So from here, I already have two networks. The first network is the one in green color, and I only have two PC in the green color network. The second network is the blue color one, and they are a wireless network, and I have three machines in the blue color network. So basically, these slides, what, what we want to show you is that there are so many ways we can build networks. And we can do this with so many different kinds of connections. It can be an Ethernet connection, a wireless connection, it can be 3G, 4G, 5G, so many, many different kinds of ways. Okay? Now, uh, in fact, there are two ways that you can use to build networks. Okay? So either you want to use a wired connection or a wireless connection. So one example here is uh, over here I have this app. Earpod. This is an Apple Earpod. So, uh, to listen to music using this uh this earphone, uh, you need to find a you need to connect this cable to the phone. Okay. So this is a wired connection. Now, if I take a scissors, okay, I cut this cable away. With a scissors, I can cut this away. I lose the cable. Then, magic, it become an AirPod. So this is a wireless connection. Do you see that? So this is wired connection. This is wireless. Okay, that is the difference. So uh, in fact, this one, uh, this you can see this is new. Uh, this one is still in his in the box, and I'm gonna do a giveaway for this earpod because I have too many headphones and earphone in my office now. So I'm gonna give this away in a short while on my Instagram story. So don't forget to check back. Uh. this is not an ad. Okay, this is just a giveaway. Okay, now. Coming back to the slide here, let's go to the first kind of wired connections. Now the first kind of connections is called the Ethernet connection. And this is the most commonly used connections that you can find on the internet these days. Okay. So this Ethernet connections here. Um, if you are using a LAN connection right now, I think you I'm guessing you're using an Ethernet connection. Okay. So I have one. Ethernet cable here. Let me show you what is the Ethernet cable. Okay, now this one, this is uh, what you're looking at here is an Ethernet cable. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen this lot because if you are using a wire connection, most likely you're be, you are actually using this cable at the moment. So um over here, what I have is a Cat5 cable. Okay. The scientific name for this cable is called RJ45. But if you go to a PC shop and then you say, I want to buy a LAN cable, you will just say, I want to buy a LAN cable. You wouldn't say, I want to buy an RJ45 cable. Okay, unless that seller is also taking data comp. So uh, it's just a scientific name. And in fact, we have uh, actually a few variants of Ethernet cable here. So the first one is the standard Ethernet. And this is used back in those days where people first started the internet. So with Ethernet, you can actually get up to 10 megabits per second of connections, which is too slow for our requirement these days. So if you want to get uh, go faster, then you have to use a fast Ethernet. Now with fast Ethernet, you can actually get up to 100 meg per second, okay, which is quite fast enough for most of the things that we are doing day in, day out right now. Uh, 
Uh, you can also stream 4K video using 100 meg connections, but it is just barely supporting 4K. So let's say if you want to go any faster, okay, or you want to play online game and if because when you play online game, if I lose, I'll definitely blame the connection one. Well, why so lag? So if you do not want to blame the connections, you want to go even faster, then you can get to the gigabit. And with gigabit, you can get up to 1000 megabits per second, which is really, really fast. And let's say today, uh, if you just bought a new laptop for your degree program, because you tell your mom, hey, mommy, uh, uh, my programming lecturer say, uh, if I don't buy a new PC that is very powerful, I cannot pass the programming subject. Uh, then your mom will be say, oh, okay, okay, buy, buy, just buy. How much you need? Just tell me. Then you buy a new PC. Now, if you just bought a new PC recently in uh, these few years, then most likely it should already come with a gigabit Ethernet connections. Lah, okay? For those who are still sporting a, a physical connection. But most modern one, some of the PC, it doesn't even come with this kind of uh, Ethernet cable uh, connections anymore. Okay, so that is the Ethernet cables. Uh, we also call this an RJ45 cable. Okay, now this cable, in fact, there are also a few different kind of cat uh, RJ45 cable, and we call them cat cable. The one that I'm having here with me right now is a cat five cable. So I call this a cat five cable. Okay, which is also good enough for a hundred meg connections. Now let's say if today your your home network is using Unify Turbo, if you are one of those lucky guy who has been turbo by TM, then you will be having hundred meg or three hundred meg or five hundred meg connections. Okay, now for you to fully enjoy those speed, you need to upgrade this cable. Okay, you can change this cable to a Cat six or Cat seven. Now the the most recent one that we have is Cat six or a Cat seven E. Okay. So these are, all of them are the same, okay? They allow you to connect using the RJ45, but the material and the way the cable is built is different. So with CAT6 and CAT7, of course, it will be slightly more expensive, but you can get a much better connection speed, better transmission rate, better reliability, okay? Now, it depends on whether you have a unified turbo. Now, if you only have a 10 meg connection or if you use data, then don't care, lah, okay? Cat5 is good enough for most of the things that we are using this day. Okay. So that is for the Ethernet cable. Then that is the cable that you will see very frequently when you take this subject. Okay, because we are going to build networks and then we will be connecting most of the devices using this Ethernet cable. Okay, now let's get to the next connections here. Now the next one is uh we call them a serial connections. Now serial connections, I have one serial cable here. Uh, this is actually a quite a bulky cable. Uh. So this one here is uh this serial cable is not a normal cable where you would normally go to a PC shop and then you buy this cable because uh we don't use this cable to connect any consumer products, okay? It's more towards enterprise product and I got this cable from the router so it come together when I buy a router a Cisco router then this cable come with it in the box so as you can see uh, this cable is they are having this is the kind of the connector head here so this cable is used mainly to connect two routers together so let's say if I have router 1 and router 2, I want to connect two routers together, then I will be using this serial cable. Okay, I don't use this for any other thing except to connect two routers together. Okay, yeah. So um, again, this one, it comes with the router. So later, I will also be showing you the router that come in the box. Lah, okay. So uh, we move on to the next cable here. And let's talk about the console cable. Now this console cable is not the kind of cable the con PS5 or PS4 console. Okay, that is a game console. This one is a console cable where we use to connect a PC to a router. Okay, so there are two ways we can connect a PC to a router. Okay, the first way which is what we have been doing all this time is using this cable, an Ethernet cable. So I think uh, just like what you have in your home network, if you connect your PC here to a router, 
then you can get to the internet, you can go online, okay? So this one, it acts like as the data transmission medium, okay? To allow you to connect to the internet. So this is a LAN cable. But we can also connect your PC to a router using this cable. Again, this is called a console cable. But this connection is not used to go to the internet. Instead, this one is used for you to configure a router. Okay, meaning that you also connect your PC to the router the same way using different cable. This one you connect means you want to go to the internet. This one you connect means you want to configure a router. So why do we need to do this? It's because later on you will see a router uh, just like any of the router that you have seen, there is no display that comes with the router. So if I want to change any setting on a router, I need a display, I need an LCD. Okay, so that is the reason we need to connect the router to a PC because with PC we have a monitor. Then we can configure the router from the PC. And when you do that, you are going to use this console cable. Okay. Okay, uh, after this, then we have the aux cable. Aux cable is not really important in networking. Like you have an aux cable in a router. I will show you the port later. Optical cable is, is the cable that you use to connect your to your home theater and things like that. In fact, I have one optical cable here. So let me just show you the optical cable. So here, this, this guy here, this is an optical cable. I'm going to show you uh, up close, uh, but I, I don't want to go too close so that you don't see all the pores on my face. So this is the, the furthest I can go. And here, yeah, right now this cable that you're looking at is an optical cable. And this is mainly used to connect between home theaters and sound bar and speaker. So this is mainly for, and uh, I think, connecting entertainment devices. Like it's not too much for networking okay anyway since i have it that's why i'm showing you here so uh that is the optical cable i don't have an sbdf cable so i cannot show you a uh, sbd today but anyway that's okay let's go to the next one and we'll be talking about the wireless connections okay so now wireless connections i think all of us are quite familiar with bluetooth if you have uh, any earbud or anything like that like this then most of the time you'll be connecting your uh, this device to your phone or your iPad or your laptop using a Bluetooth connection. So that's Bluetooth. Okay. Now how about NFC? NFC uh mostly if you're having an Android phone, uh which is actually high end one, then some of them they come with NFC, which stands for near field communications. Okay, so NFC is uh, cool in one way, is because let's say this is a device. So imagine that this is a device with NFC, okay? Now if I want to connect this device to this tablet, I don't have to go to the setting and then I find the Bluetooth. Instead, I can just take this thing and do a tap here. I just tap, then ding ding, they are connected. Which is why uh, NFC is very useful in certain use case where you don't want to connect or find the connections. You can just bring two devices close to each other then they will be connected together. Okay, that is NFC, near field communications. And in fact, if you are if you have used any like um, Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, that also works on NFC. So for example, if you have an Apple Watch, so when you want to make payment, uh, you don't have to open your phone and then go to touch and go apps or go to uh what grab pay, no need. You can just tap do a simple tap and then payment is clear. But of course, provided that you have money inside your account, lah, then that is as simple as it can get. And that happens because of NFC. Because two devices get very close to each other when you have a contact, then they communicate. Okay, In fact, people call this a contactless kind of communication because you don't need to do anything. You just need to get two devices close to each other. So that is NFC. Okay. Now how about Wi-Fi Direct? Okay, uh, Wi-Fi Direct is a kind of wireless connections that uh, is similar to the wireless connections that you're using right now. And then um, the only difference is that in the wireless connections, you can connect many, many devices. So for example, in your home, you maybe you have a brother, a sister, uncle, girlfriend, big girlfriend, small girlfriend, many different girlfriends. So all of them are connected to the same router. 
using a wireless connection. So you can support many, many devices. Okay, of course, if you have a better router, you can support more simultaneous Wi-Fi connections at one time. Lah. But uh, that is the normal Wi-Fi. Okay? Now for Wi-Fi Direct, it is kind of an ad hoc communication. So it is used to link up two devices. Okay? Sometimes, of course, uh, in different kind of Wi-Fi Direct, you, have, you can link up more, but normally it is used to link up two devices. So for example, uh, let's say if you have, if you just bought a PC, okay, in recent years, or if you just bought a new PC for this degree to start your degree, so all the new laptops you will find, uh, Ultrabooks, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, they actually is so thin, uh, they are so slim that they do not have enough clearance on the machine itself to add all this uh, port that you connect to a projector. Now for example, in the older machines, you will get the HDMI port, you will get the VGA port, or maybe a DVI port. And that is how you connect your PC to the projector to do some presentations. Okay? Now, how about all these kind of ultrabooks? You don't have that port. So one way is, of course, you will get an adapter. And then you add so much bulkiness to your slim device, right? Another way is you can just connect this device to a wireless projector using the Wi-Fi Direct technology. So if you are running on Windows 10, uh, this Wi-Fi Direct is built in. So what you need is actually another projector that also supports Wi-Fi Direct. So let's say one day you come back to the campus, you want to do presentations, you actually don't have to find a cable. Okay, you can just connect this directly to the projector using this, uh, what we call the Wi-Fi Direct connection. So that is Wi-Fi Direct, okay? Okay, now moving on to the next one, cellular. Cellular is uh, one of the most popular way for us to get online these days. Uh. So if you are streaming right now using your mobile data, data plan, then yes, you are already on a cellular network. So um, for cellular, we started with 2G and then we move on to 3G, 4G and now we are going to have 5G very soon. So you see the difference uh, when we go up for each generation, it is not just um, we have speed improvement, we have more more, I mean, different kind of tech that we added in when we are going from generation to generation. So in fact, uh, uh, I think if you are able to stream this video using uh, your data plan, most likely you are in a 4G coverage area, which is uh, good news. And if you are in Klang Valley, uh, they have started installing 5G towers. So just for information, last year around December, uh, around November, Maxis and Huawei, they already started to roll out the 5G test and they actually get up to 3 gig per second of uh, the speed test, which is really, really fast. And that's not the only thing, okay? Because with 5G, um, you actually decrease the latency to 1 millisecond. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, so what I can tell you is that now if you are in the market to buy a new laptop, or a new mobile phone, uh, sorry, a new mobile phone right now, don't do it yet because in coming months, uh, in two or three months, most of the new mobile phone that uh, they are putting out will definitely come with 5G built-in. So I think that's a better time for you to get a phone. So if you want to buy a phone, don't buy it right now. And it is also true if you are trying to get a mobile a laptop for your degree, okay? So in a few months' time, things are going to get really shake up. So... Apple, they are going to release the ARM-based uh, computer, uh, if the rumors are true. So that is going to cut the cost and you, may, you can even buy a MacBook at a cheaper price, I'm not sure. And also AMD. AMD is going to release a new processor in a few months. So I think if you want to buy a laptop, you should wait up for maybe two or three more months. And that's where you can get a better deal for your new laptop in your degree program, okay? But anyway, uh, if you already have a good machine, then you don't really need to get up and looking for be looking for a new machines because uh, you can run any software. If you're taking programming, you're taking any other subjects, I think any decent machines should be able to run those kind of requirements. But if you think that you need more compute power, there's always a cloud computing. So you can always do this on Google Cloud, Amazon web service, things like that. Lah. Okay. Anyway, that's just uh, some story for you. So uh, let's get back to the slide. So about this uh, wireless communications and wide communication. Now, if you have a questions where 
you are thinking which one are better do you think that a wired connection is better or a wireless connection is better now if you ask a gamer i am sure gamer will tell you that want me to game on wireless uh, no 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 but if you say game on wired connection okay because gamer is very sensitive to delay okay so you know uh, as i'm also a gamer so you know that 10 millisecond difference is going to change the whole game so we don't want to play in lag and most this this is the reason why gamer normally want to play using a wired connections okay but these days uh, with a newer kind of wireless technology that is coming out i can tell you that actually wired and wireless is almost a draw in terms of latency and speed so of course when we are talking about connections you want the connections to be fast and stable that's what we are looking for like. and with the new wi-fi 6 we're going to have wi-fi 6 very soon and also the 5g that we talked about earlier um you're going to get a speed that is almost as fast as a gigabit ethernet connections okay so it is similarly fast and the most important thing is that the latency is also reduced to one millisecond that is some breaking news here because you see uh, what people want in the connections why people choose to use a wire is because the latency uh, if i'm using a wireless connections then the delay might be too big for what i'm trying to do so and especially if you're gaming then delay is really a big issue but with wi-fi 6 and uh, this 5g they cut it down to one millisecond which means that it is almost not perceptible anymore i'm not I don't think anybody out there is going to tell that hey, I have one millisecond delay, that's not going to happen unless you have the flash. It is not going to happen. Which is why I say wired and wireless these days they are almost the same. So of course in Malaysia we haven't got uh, most of the Wi-Fi 6 equipment ready yet and 5G is going to start real soon in a few months time and that's the time where things are going to get exciting. Right? So for now just wait for a few more months and then you don't even have to think about wired or wireless because they are just the same thing uh, very soon okay so that uh that's it for the different kind of wireless connections and wired connections that i'm trying to show you so let's get back to the slides and then uh we go to this slide first okay let's get to this uh building a simple network so i have skipped a few slides in between that's okay because uh, after this uh, building simple network slides, we will get back to all these the slides that I have skipped previously. Okay, because I don't want to break the flow, so I'm going to show you how do you build a simple network first. Okay. Now, um, actually, uh, building network is not a difficult thing if you understand the concept. Because building network is just like you playing Lego. I don't know how many of you play Lego here. But the way we play Lego is very simple. Like we want to find the piece, the component that you are going to need now or maybe you need it next to build a big castle, right? So you have this uh, manual and then you just follow the manual step by step. Step one, what you do. Step two, what you do. And then which part of the Lego that you need for this step. And then you, in a short while, wow, you got a yourself a cluster so actually when it comes to building networks it is much or less the same thing okay so it doesn't matter whether you are building a very big complex network for apple or for google right or you're building a very simple network for your own home network where you only have one or two devices the logic is the same because we always start by finding out what is the component we need to build the network okay so like lego we always find out what is the component that we need and in networking in fact it is easier than playing lego because in lego uh, we have so many different kind of bricks or pieces with different shape or texture right in computer network it always come down to a few different kind of networking devices and most of the time you'll be seeing a switch or a router or a hub so over here this slide here shows you uh, the three main devices that we normally use to build networks. So of course it will be different. For example, if you're building a network for Apple and you need to support, the network is, should be able to support like 100,000 employees. So the kind of device that you use will be 
actually different. Okay, you need to use a more expensive router. In your home network, you don't need to use a router that costs up to 10k, 20k. You only need a TP-Link router or a D-Link router, then as enough of us, right? So, of course, uh, that will be different. But the core of the logic is that we're going to use these kind of devices from time to time. Okay, so it doesn't matter uh, how complex it is, you have to really understand how, what is a router, what is a switch, what is a hub, and how they are different from each other. That's important. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do an unboxing video with you right now. I will show you the real router, the real switch, and the real hub. And then we'll go through them in detail and see how they are different from each other. Okay, so just give me one minute. Uh, stay here for one minute and then when we come back, I'll be showing you all the kind of different networking devices that I have with me today. Okay guys, so uh, welcome back and I have a Cisco router here with me so we're going to do this unboxing of this router here together. I'll be showing you what we have in the box and how does the router looks like and then how do we connect cable to this router. Okay, so I um, can tell you that from the box I can tell this is some good quality stuff. Uh, this is a Cisco product. Of course you can have uh, different router from different manufacturers, you can have it from Huawei, from 3Com, from Ericsson but for this subject, uh, everything that we'll be using are Cisco devices uh, okay? so let's see what we have in the box here and uh, okay, so it comes with all the cables that we have talked about earlier so we have these serial connections here, so this is what I've shown you earlier and this is the cable that we use to connect two or more routers together so again this is a serial cable and most of the time it comes together with the router that you buy and this again like what I have shown you earlier this is the console cable and you definitely need this one if you have a Cisco router without this one then get it back send it back because you don't have without this cable you cannot configure your router so this is really an important cable here that uh, you need to work with a router and this one everybody know about this cable this is the most important cable not just for networking for anything because this is the power cable and without the power you cannot turn on anything okay so this cable is the most important cable that you will ever need okay now let's take a look at how does the router looks like uh, so over here i have with me a cisco router okay now this router is actually quite heavy. Uh, I'm trying to hold this router here for you. So um, the very first thing that you will notice is it is quite different from the router that you see in your home network. So normally you have a D-Link, a TP-Link, something like that. Now this is a Cisco router and the main difference comparing to the router that you have is this one is way more expensive. Okay, 
So it's like two months of my salary and I wouldn't want to spoil this thing. So I have to be very careful here. So why, why is it much more expensive? Now the first thing is of course this one is an enterprise grade router. The one that you're having is a home router. Okay. So if you want to steal a router, steal this router. Okay. And why how is an enterprise grade router different from a consumer grade router? Okay, uh, they are different in a few ways. One of the ways is one of the things is that you can do much more different configurations on this router. So uh in a home router, you can get into the router, you can change some basic setting, like uh, you can change your Wi-Fi name, you can change the channel, you can change the network address, you can change some of the IP configurations, but simple basic stuff. But with this router, you can do a lot more, okay? You can configure DHCP server on it, you can configure Telnet, things like that. So first thing is, this router is different from the router that you see every day because you can do much more different configurations on this router. And of course, it can support more devices. So I'm not sure how many devices your router can support, maybe up to 10 or 20. Okay, you really have to test it out and then you will find out. But this one is an enterprise grade. So we normally use this if you are having a campus like in Sungai Long or in Gamba campus then uh, if you want to connect our campus network to the internet, then most likely we'll be using routers like this, okay? So that it can support up to 1,000 or maybe even 10,000 of users at the same time. Like. So that's the second difference here. And of course, the third difference is I think the build quality is really, really good. It is actually built from solid aluminium. Oh, not bad. So real, real good stuff here. Now let's take a look at, our, at the back of the router. I'm going to show you this up close and we'll see how we can connect the cables to this router here. So over here, um, I hope you can see this clearly. Uh, this one is you, the one that is tagged in yellow color, the label yellow, is where you put in the LAN cable. So the LAN cable that we have just picked about earlier, this cable goes in here. And when you do that, that's how you connect your device to the internet. So this end here, you connect it to the router and the other end here you connect this to a PC. So just let me get a PC and then this will be clear. So this is a PC. Okay, this this one is an NUC for Intel. So this is those are uh, the small the small computer that you want to use. If you like all the clean look, you don't like any mess on the table, then you can consider getting one of these devices. So uh if I do this here, so I connect this PC to this router. So assuming that this router is connected to the internet somewhere, this PC can now can also connect to the internet now. Okay, so that is what we normally do. Now, another type of connections here that you will see is the one that is labeled in blue. So this one here is a console port. Okay, remember that we talked about the console cable that come with the router earlier. This cable, this is where this cable goes in. So if you look at this one here, I'm going to connect this console cable, this head here, to this part. Just be careful, I don't want to spoil this thing. Okay, so that's how you connect uh, the console cable to the router. And for the other end here, I'm going to connect this one to a PC that has a, has this port. Okay. Now, if you are using a laptop or some other modern PC, then you cannot find this port on the PC. So that is not suitable for you to configure a router. Okay. Now, if you are having a, a desktop machine, a tower, or maybe something like a gaming rig, then on the motherboard, most likely you will find this port. And if you are able to connect this port here, to the PC, that means that you can use the screen of your PC to configure this router. Because as you can see, uh, there is no screen here. So if I want to configure this router, how can, how can I do it? So definitely you need this cable and you connect this to a PC. Okay. So just uh, as a reminder, there is a difference here. So when you connect this one to a PC, it is for configuration. It means that you want to change some of the settings here. Like you want to add an IP address here, you want to set a routing here, that you use this. 
Now, if you just want to get online to the internet, then you should be using the LAN cable. Okay, the LAN cable that I've shown you earlier. So this cable here is for you to go online. So again, you connect the same PC to the same router, but depending on which you are using, the purpose is different. This is to go to the internet. This is to get into the router to do the configurations. Okay. Now after this, uh, let's see how we can connect this serial cable. This is the biggest cable have I have ever seen. So uh, and this one, like I said earlier, this is to connect two routers together. So this one here will go into this this port here. So can you see this clearly? And I'm not going to connect this uh, because it is I need three hands to do so. Uh. Now I already have using both of my hands. So this one here will go in here. And the other end here, the other end will go to another router. So you need to have two routers. One router, two routers, you connect both of the routers using this cable. Okay, now if you're asking why I want to connect two routers together, uh, we're going to learn about routing in one of the lectures. Okay, because again, uh, on the internet, it's all routers. Okay, all the internets are consist of routers. And let's say now you're streaming. Okay, this video here that you're looking at right now, this data frame actually go through so many routers, maybe 10, uh, 10 or 100 routers before you can actually see my face. So if it is why we need to connect many many routers together so that what I'm sending here you can receive it on your end. Okay, but we're going to talk about those in more details in the coming lectures. Now in this lecture it is all introductory, so just going to give you an idea about what we are doing in computer networking and how are some of the devices look like. Okay, so there is router. I'm going to give you one close look, one last look on the router, and I will keep this, then we will start to unbox the switch so this is a cisco router this is a really expensive router and normally most all of the student here uh, is going to get one router to play with but since this is an online class then uh, all of you are still going to get one router but it is a virtual router on a software we call packet tracer okay so um, i don't think you will have the chance to touch this router but that's okay uh, because you have seen this very close so i hope that you have seen a real enterprise router and yeah that's it i'm going to show you the next device in one minute Okay guys, I am back here again with another network devices that you will be using very frequently in this subject. So this is a switch here. I have a switch with me. So, okay, uh, if you think something is wrong, uh, switch. The logo here is supposed to be Nintendo Switch. So why is it a Cisco here? So the switch that I'm going to show you here, uh, it is not 
the Nintendo Switch that you are playing, uh, instead this is a switch that is used to connect devices together in the LAN. Okay, so let's see. Good box, good quality. So real good stuff here. Let's see what we have inside. And okay, now uh, we have the same thing here. So we have the power cable and again another console cable, which means that you can do the same thing like what we have done to the router. You can connect a PC to a switch using the same console cable and you can do some configurations on the switch. So in this subject, we are, we are also going to learn about how you can configure a switch to build a virtual LAN in one of the labs. Okay? So again, uh, only two cables. So actually, this, uh, this uh, switch is... Uh, compare, if you are comparing a switch to a router, this is actually cheaper than a router. And we will find out why in a very short while. So let's see what do we have. What else do we have on the... Okay, so I have a switch here. It's actually new and it is still in the plastic. But this one is, I'm not giving away this one. This one belongs to Utah, so no giveaway for the switch. But the giveaway will be for this earpod, okay? So yeah, this is the switch. And the first thing that you'll see is, again, this is a Cisco switch. So you're seeing the Cisco logo here. And um, the first thing that you will notice, how it, how is this different is from a router is that you it's actually way smaller. Okay? And because this is a layer 2 device, but just now when you're looking at a router, a router is actually a layer 3 device. So you are having a layer 2 device and a layer 3 device. Now I'll tell you what are the differences here. The first thing that you'll see physically there are difference in terms of you see there are more number of ports here on a switch compared to a router. So earlier when I show you the router you only have four ports and you have two ports that are yellow color. So the yellow color one is the one that you use to go to the internet. So actually you can only connect two PC. Only two PC can go to the internet at the same time if you connect directly to a router. So that is not cost effective. For example, if I have five PC, then I need too many different routers. And they also they will be in different networks. So which is why we need this thing. We call this a switch. You actually hold this is one hand. It's actually quite uh it's way lighter than a router. And yeah so this one here this is the console port that you will connect it uh, connect to the PC2 here to configure this switch. So if you want to change the setting here, okay, again, this there's no display here, so you need to connect this to a display, and this is where you connect uh, the switch to the PC. And all other ports here are the Ethernet ports. Actually, this one, they are actually fast Ethernet, and this is where you connect the PC2 if you want to go to the Internet. So the very first difference uh, between a switch and a router is that you can see uh, with a switch I can connect more devices at the same time so that they can go to the internet but with a router I can the router that I had, I had earlier I can only connect two devices to go to the internet okay that's the first difference now the second difference is that this switch uh, although you can connect more devices and it is way cheaper than a router if compared to a router uh, it doesn't allow you to go to the internet. That is the key difference here. So uh, if you want to get to another network, for example, I'm here, I'm in Gampa campus right now. If I want to talk to somebody in the Sungai Long campus, I cannot do this if I only have a switch. I need a router. So a router is used if you want to talk to somebody who are in another network. Okay? So let's say you and me right now, I'm streaming from Gampa. You might be streaming this video from Penang, from KL, from Sabah on top of a tree. Okay, now if you are streaming from other remote locations, you are in different networks, which is why you have your router in your home network. Okay, so the router is very important in the way that it allows different networks to connect to each other. In your network, my network, your friend network. Okay, but with a switch, you cannot do that. Meaning that if I only buy this today because I said I want to save money, I want to cut costs. I buy this, I build a network here. 
Now, if I do this in Kampa campus, I connect all the PC here together. Everybody in Kampa campus will be able to talk to each other. We will be able to communicate. But I cannot talk to somebody in other network like they are in Sungai Long. Okay? So uh, you will learn more about this, what is the concept of a LAN, and then how they are different in coming lectures. But for now, just think of it in this way. If you want to connect different networks together, you need a router, the one that I shown you earlier. If you only want to build a local area network, a LAN, for example, you are going to have a LAN party, okay? So everybody come to my house. Tonight we are going to play, I don't know, Dora 2 or Diablo. Let's play Diablo together here. So all of us just connect our PC together. We don't need to pay Unify. No Unify, no problem. We can still play together in the LAN game. So this one allows you to build a local area network. A router allows you to connect between different different local area networks. Okay, so these are the key differences. So I'm going to give you one uh, closer look at the switches uh, that we had, and then I will show you why it's hard. So uh, again, uh, in this subject, you will be using this quite often in packet tracer, but you wouldn't have a chance to touch this thing. Anyway, don't worry because I think the switch that you should be using is the Nintendo Switch, not this one. This one is just uh, used to connect devices together. So uh, that's it for switch. I'm going to show you how in one minute. So be right back. Hey guys, so I'm back with uh, the last demo device that I want to show you today. So this, I have a hub here with me. Now this is not a Cisco hub, okay, uh, it's from 3 -Corp. And okay, let's get right into it and see how it is different from a switch. So the first thing that you notice is even the box is not as classy as a Cisco product. Okay, uh, so and I can tell you that this is actually way cheaper than a switch that you had just seen earlier. Let's see what we have inside. Okay, so we have all these uh, cables and manuals, warranty card, and this is the power adapter. So let's just look at the switch itself. Uh, sorry, the hub itself. So yeah, this is the hub.
Now, first thing that you will notice again is that, wow, now this is even way smaller than a switch. So just now you have seen the router is so big, so heavy, and then switch is relatively smaller, and now this hub is even smaller. Okay? Now, um, you want to know about the price, I can tell you that, of course, it depends on the brand and the version of the device, but you are talking about the same product from the same link, then router is the most expensive one, followed by the switch, and then uh, this hub is the cheapest among the three. Okay? And there is a reason for that. So this hub here that I'm having with me is a layer one device. So you will be learning about layers in coming lectures. For now, you just need to know that this is a layer one device, a switch is a layer two device, a router is a layer three device. Okay? Which means that they can actually do more things. So I think I just now you have seen the introduction part of this video. And remember that for those who are start who study smart. You should already follow me on my Instagram. So comparing a switch and a hub, a switch is those students who study smart and this hub is those who study hard. This is the people who don't follow me. Okay, now the reason why is because this hub is not so smart compared to a switch because it is in layer one. So I'm sure that uh, okay, before I tell you more about that, let's just take a look at the back of the hub here. So Again, it is something very similar to a switch. This is where you put in all the Ethernet cables where you connect to all uh, the cable. You want to link all the devices together. So if you want to have a LAN party or Diablo, 2, uh, Diablo 3, again, you can use this. If you cannot afford a switch, you can use this. You can still create a LAN. So all the devices that are connected here, they will form a LAN, a local area network, and then they will be able to talk to each other. Okay. So what you do with this hub, and what you do with the switch, you get the same thing. The only difference is that the performance that you get from this is not as good as a switch. Okay, and the reason why is because this hub, it is a broadcast device. Whereas a switch is a forwarding device. Now this is uh, quite different. Don't worry about the technical terms yet because in the lab, you will see it for yourself. What is forwarding, what is broadcasting. Now in this video, it is just introduction, so you, I think it is good enough if you know that this device, it broadcasts, okay, broadcast meaning that send it to everyone, whereas a switch is a forwarding device, it is a unicast device, meaning that I send to one destination at one time, so it's one to one. So as you can see here, um, I'm sure some of you have those kind of friends where if you tell them a secret in a very short while, the whole university or the whole group of friends will know about that secret. So hub is, hub is that kind of friend, okay? So what, how it is different from a switch is because, let's say, I have two devices connected together. So let's say this is device 1 and this is device 2. So they are all connected to this hub, okay? And then I have another, let's say, a device 3. So I have three devices here. Uh, don't worry, I'm just trying to Try to show you a rough demonstration. In the lab, I'll show you the real example using the animations, okay? So let's say this guy here, all three of them are connected to this hub, right? Now, if this guy here is talking to this guy, okay? So when I talk to this guy, this guy also heard about what we talk because this guy is a broadcast device. So all the packets that are being sent to a hub will be sent out to everyone on the network, okay? So that is a broadcast device. So which is why uh, when you use a hub, the performance is not as good. Because think about this again. If this guy is talking, when I talk to him, the message is sent to this guy, right? This hub before forwarded to this guy. This guy also heard about our conversations. Meaning that if I have more devices here, all of them is going to hear about what two of these people is talking. So this is not good in a way that you have to replicate packets to many different destinations who is not supposed to get the packets. Okay, now don't worry, uh, if you're confused right now, it's okay, I will show you more technical details in the other lectures. So uh, I think that's it for these lectures. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is that we have three different devices. This one is the cheapest one, it is a broadcast device. If you don't have any money, but you want to build a LAN, buy this. But if you want better performance for a network, uh, buy a switch, don't buy this. Okay, because this is also not good for security in some reason. 
And if you want to talk to somebody else on the other side of the world, like I have to talk to my girlfriend who are in New York right now, then I need a router. So that are the difference between hard switches and routers. Okay, so I hope that you have learned something new today in this stream. And in the next stream, we're going to talk about the client server architectures next week, Wednesday. So see you again. Thank you for joining, guys. Peace out. I didn't before And all I've seen Since 18 hours ago Is green eyes and freckles And your smile in the back of my mind Making me feel bad I just wanna know You better know You better know You better now I just wanna know You better know You better know You better now I just wanna know Everything has changed
stomach is butterfly. Who's the beautiful kind? Making up for lost time. Taking flight, making me feel right. I just wanna know you better know. You better know. You better know. I just wanna know you better know. You better know. You better know. I just wanna know you better know. You better know. You better know. I just wanna know. Long nights with you when the worst gets said, but it ends in bed. Sweet butter.